it's not a cooking video I apologize for that but I will do a bonus cooking video Friday Saturday or Sunday look out for that one if you haven't subscribed yet please consider subscribing to this channel lots of useful videos on this channel and here's one of them what's up peeps and welcome back to Israel plays I'm at work but I'm just gonna show you how you do edging um, what brush I use and what methods we can use to do it soft grip brush from Wix I love these brushes and I'll never use anything else they've got very soft bristles I've already started painting but just thought well why not do a video about it very soft bristles a nice grippy handle um, lots of control with this and you can't go wrong of course you do need a steady hand and if you don't have one I've got a few gadgets you can use it's a spirit level um, it's got the handle which really helps so you can put it up against the wall and use that um, basically just painting against the edge of it and just clean it each time you know you do the next bit which is a bit of a pain so it's good if you could work on getting a steady hand it's gonna really benefit you while you're painting the other one is a edging tool I'll show you that this is the paint shield I've abused it a little bit I only use this when it's a very difficult area to do um, if half the time you can fit this in I don't find it useful for ceilings because it kind of gets in the way when you're trying to do it so I do just do all my edging by hand using that soft brush which is brilliant first tip I want to give you when you're painting is don't dip your bristles in fully just the tip of it will do you don't need too much paint on if you keep a roller on your tray you can always wipe the excess off and you're not wasting any because we'll be doing the roller work after don't get too close to the edge because the beginning bit where the paint's on the end of the bristles that's where it gets messy if you go straight to the edge then it's going to smudge up the edge already and before you've even started you're not going to have the willpower to work on this so dipping it in taking off some of the excess and what we do is rotate the brush as we use it so we've got the first bit we're going to come into the edge but not too close again so the same thing applies with the skirting as it does with edging on windows or wherever else and we're going to edge our way into the edge into the corner very slowly once we've established how much paint we've got on the um, brush and also how much paint do you actually have on the edge of the brush because that will be different each time you dip your brush back in there's no angle or anything you can use while you're dipping into the pot but do use a tray because that's going to keep you a lot tidier while you're working and you're not going to be dipping your brush in too far whereas if you're using it straight from the pot you could be making that mistake so we're easing our way in gently and we're going over it a few times it's definitely worth doing this and taking your time on it and only taking a little bit of paint on the brush each time you dip it in I mean really with the edging you're only gonna have to do this the difficult part once the second time is gonna get a lot easier because it's gonna glide over the new paint so that's automatically gonna give you a little bit more power and control with your brush so we're just finishing off whatever paint we've got on the brush and then the next time we dip it in we're starting from the part where the paint didn't give us much coverage towards the end of the stroke that we've done the line that we've done so we're going to do the same thing again each time we paint now because this bits under a little window sill um, I'm right-handed so I'll find it quite difficult going the opposite way and I might knock my hand on the edge of the window sill so I'll start under the window sill so that that doesn't happen so thinking about strategies with where you're painting depending on where you're painting things will differ so you see that I'm going in again I'm taking my time completely spreading out all the paint until it gets to the edge and only loading my brush once it needs it again for the next part now for skirting I like to go in at an angle like I'm doing here it's going to be difficult for me to show you this on the camera but I start off with kind of gliding across like I did at the beginning and then when I get to more difficult angles where there's other things in the way or you know if I'm finding that it's helping me particularly with the amount of paint I've got on my brush that time you can change your tactics depending on how it goes you can see here there's a difficult bit so what I'm doing is going over it lots of times instead of waving my brush around over the area where there's damage you can paint over damaged areas 
um, if you're using these strokes left and right so that the paint gets underneath the part that's raised I mean you could chip that off and fill it and do it that way but if you're trying to do a job quickly and it's somewhere where it's not visible then that's fine so around sockets as well we're using the same sort of technique not getting too close to the socket in the beginning and just spreading out our paint as we go along to make sure that it's getting into any little dips and stuff which you can see on the right of the um, socket here just underneath there's a little lump there so to be able to get over that without it kind of jogging your brush out of the way and this is what we do the direction of the socket so that we've done the bottom of it so we went along the bottom of it and then we're doing this side now so we're going upwards with our strokes we're not trying to go left and right painting the wall or using the roller trying to get too close to it I think that patience is the most important thing when you're painting if you want to get the job done neatly um, that will include not dripping the paint um, not getting your paint on the socket so you have a lot of cleaning to do afterwards um, skirting boards as well you you know if you're not painting the skirting boards which in this case we're not painting them um, then I have to try and be as tidy as I possibly can with the skirting boards the sockets have like little rounded edges on this one some sockets are square so the rounded edges you basically just keep going round until you've got around that edge as well so with a continuous stroke around the corner and then if there's little bits like this that you need to fill I always find that using my brush at an angle again helps so you have to change the angle of your brush depending on what you're doing you can't really see the bit I'm recording here now because I'm using my left hand to record and painting while I'm doing it so I can't actually see what's in the camera but there it is so after this once if your sockets too low down quite low down try using a smaller roller that's going to always help you especially around the socket to get neat edges and a um, kind of blending in of the brush strokes because we don't really want to leave too much brush strokes around sockets and stuff so we're going to use our roller and get as close as we can possibly get to this and you can kind of feather out the um, brush marks as well like I did at the end there we're painting this room two different colors and we've got a stripe in the middle of the wall we're going to be painting one side of it blue and the other side is going to be a green stripe so we are doing the same thing here we've got a pencil line on the wall and we are just edging in with a very little amount of paint on the brush just on the ends of the bristles and going across if you can see that there's bits of the um, wall that this brush isn't covering because the paint is running out on that part of the bristle but do not rush to try and wiggle your brush around and get out what's in your um, paintbrush also don't press your paintbrush down to get the excess paint from the inside of it just take your time with it and it's basically like a, a piece of art you know you can't rush a good paint in and painting walls is not much different to that especially if you're doing skilled edging without tape I find that tape peels off the um, if you're especially if you're using new paint it will peel off the paint and there are different types of tape you can get but I'm basically somebody who likes to do freehand painting I prefer not to use tape and if you take it slow, slow like I have that looks better than if you had used tape so that's what you've got to remember that again patience comes into this we've got a little um, corner of this wall here where you can see the pencil line but the paint hasn't quite gone into it so you just need to dab your brush over those corners to try and get the corner of your brush into that corner as much as you can bearing in mind your brush is a little bit rounded on the edges for precision it's not going to help when it comes to these kind of corners so we've got a different scenario again this is by the window we've got some silicone on the side of the window I mean you can clean paint off silicone very easily at the end when it's all dry but obviously you want to try and get it as neatly as as possible so that you don't have a lot of cleaning to do at the end and again I'm taking it slow I'm using the palm of my hand close to my wrist resting it on the wall so that I don't have any sudden movements and that way I can keep my hand steady to control the movement of my hand so it's not too fast and also you'll notice that I've brought my fingers closer to the bristles of the brush just for that extra bit of control 
So you can switch the way you use your brush depending on which angle you're doing, what you're painting as well. Um, all of that stuff comes into it and it's all about how you use your hand and how you use your brush and how you load your paint and also taking your time. So we've got the ceiling area here. Now I know a lot of people hate painting doing the edging near the ceiling. It's actually the easiest part um, because basically if you are not getting to that edge straight away you're going to have just enough paint left on the side of your brush. You can see that little ball of paint moving along just to edge the side of your ceiling. You don't even need to get your brush near it. That little ball of paint that builds up on the side of your brush will make that completely straight when you've finished as long as you take your time. I'm doing the angle um, movement again here. Um, depending on your ceiling, I mean some ceilings have a lot of damage. If you use your um, paintbrush at an angle it gives you a little bit more control over that damage and any lumps and bumps as I said earlier with um, moving the angle of your brush you can apply the paint in different ways. So for these type of corners where you need to get into that corner without making a mess on the skirting just bring your brush down start here where I've painted already and with not too much paint on your brush but more on the wall just dab it until it comes into that corner and then you can neaten it up afterwards by using your brush vertically on the wall and just edging it sideways I will be doing a lot more DIY craft blah 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 all the usual stuff I do and lots of various content coming up soon on this channel still thanks for watching guys i'll see you on the next one peace out